Yes, so all good things must come to an end. In this case, all good things is the Penguins' seven game winning streak and 39 straight penalty kills. The Penguins are hum pummeled on the road, taking a 5 nothing loss to the New York Rangers, halting their win streak at seven, and uh, their worst loss of the season. Again, I know this game happened a long time ago. I've just been really busy, but I'm just going to do a quick recap. So, yeah, nothing went well. I uh, went right in this game. Bo Benham made his return, did not play a lot. Chris Tang got hurt a bit, came back. So, best thing I can say coming out of this game is that he's not seriously injured, which is a good thing. Um, Fleury did not play particularly well. No one really played particularly well. Penguins finally gave up a power goal on the penalty kill, but it was an amazing streak. 39 straight kills. I believe they're now second or third in the league in penalty kill at almost 90%. That's pretty amazing. They're still first uh, on the power play, but it has been falling. They have not scored a power play goal since the Buffalo game, which I think probably had something to do with this one, why they did not play so well, because the Buffalo game is a little bit easy. Maybe they were a little bit used to that, but you know what? I think it's good. Adversity is good this time of year. We don't want to have easy wins. We want to learn um, to bounce back in adversity and how to how to handle that. Uh, nothing really to say much about that game. Uh, except that all good things must come to an end, which they did. And uh, the Penguins respond in the next game in Toronto uh, with a 2-1 to -one win. A 2-1 to -one win that was actually a much, much further game than it sounded. The only reason why it was 2-1 to -one is because Jonathan Bernie absolutely stood on his head for the Leafs. He was stopping pucks left, right, and center. That glove save he made in of getting Malkin snatching it up the air was incredible. Grice was also excellent, especially at the end of the game when he made that crazy paddle save on Phil Kessel after Malkin took his, his four-minute roughing penalty on Dion Phaneuf. And I'm just going to talk about the hit for a second. So um, the hit was a great hit clean hit to the chest whatever not to that at all the only thing was it was a little bit late he did not have the puck so he should have gone called for interference but i don't understand why malkin's rushing to defend a teammate like why do we always rush to defend teammates after clean hits there are dirty hits and there are clean hits and i'm a big advocate for getting those predatory headshots out of the game but dion Phaneuf is not that type of player that was not a predatory headshot. That was a clean shoulder check that was a little bit late that he should have got an interference for. There's no need for Malkin with two minutes left in the game holding a tense 2-1 to one lead um, with the hottest power play in the league at that point because the Leafs were a very hot power play on a three-game winning streak, rushing Dion Phaneuf and in, trying to instigate a fight, getting a two-minute penalty. He does the same thing to LA, and he did the same thing a few nights later. Like, there's no point in him doing that and putting your man and your team down a man and forcing the penalty kills and Grice to come up big, which they did. And the Penguins' penalty kill has looked amazing lately. Their power play has not been as strong, but that's okay because they're winning on even strength and they're winning on penalty kill. And that's how they're going to have to win if they want to have success moving forward. It's defense wins championships, not necessarily who can get the most goals in the power play. But, I mean, come on, Malkin. Use your brain. I understand his intentions, but... If the hit was dirty, it was a perfectly clean hit. There's no need for him to do that. I like how he cares. It shows emotion. But that time in the game, it's unnecessary. I mean, come on. There's no need for you to be doing that. Just as Crosby took the dumb penalty against the Rangers in the 5 nothing loss, a minute and a half into the game, there's no need for you to be doing that. Two minutes left of the game. Use your head. Anyways, so it was a great game. 2-1 to one win. Nice back and forth effort. Uh, the Penguins actually dominated possession most of the game. Outshot the Leafs forty to thirty one. Bernie was the only reason why it was even close. But Grice was also excellent. He looks very very calm. Uh, it was just a great goaltending battle. Great game all around. And uh, Crosby's pass to Dupuis on the winning goal. Oh, amazing! That like that no look backhand pass. He does that better than anybody in the league. Like, he wasn't even trying. He can literally do the pass in his sleep. He only had one assist that game, but he was making plays happen all over the ice. Like, that pass was ridiculous. I was reading an article today that um, on Copper and Blue, which is a, a mental analysis version of SB Nation, and it, it talked about adjusted um, point uh, points per era, so they adjust all the points per game depending on the era. 
uh, without being adjusted, Crosby's fourth all-time in points per game, only behind Gretzky, Lemieux, and Bossy. When you adjust it for the era and the games that they play, Crosby's third with 1.5 points per game. Right now, he's at 1.4, not adjusted, behind only Lemieux, who's first at 1.62, and Gretzky at 1.61, ahead of Bossy. Arguably the greatest goal scorer ever, ever, ahead of Bobby Orr, who set records for defensemen. Evgeny Malkin comes in at fifth at 1.3, just ahead of Alex Ovechkin. The Penguins have had two of the arguably top five players of all time, certainly of their generation, on their team when you factor in Lemieux and Yager. They've arguably had the best player in the world for 25 years. <laughs> That's pretty freaking good for a team that only entered the league in 1967. Like, we've been lucky. You know, compared to a team like Toronto, they've really only had Sundin and now Kessel. Like, we've been we've been blessed as Penguins fans. Like, that's pretty filthy. I mean, I know he only had an assist in that game, but the records that he can get, he almost has 900 points. He's 27. If he did not miss a year and a half due to injuries, he could probably have almost 1,000 points by now. Like, I, I don't doubt it. Like, that's amazing. He's just, and, and he doesn't, you know, people are talking about Conor McDavid can be the next Crosby. Um, you know, he, he can challenge his records. Steve Jankel, I thought, made a great point. To say that Conor McDavid can be the next Crosby, you have to know what you're saying. You cannot say he can be the next Crosby until you fully see him play in the NHL. Like, the amount of records Crosby is going to set or even come close to getting is ridiculous. He's a top five player of all time, and you're saying Conor David is as good or better than that? That's that's stiff competition. I don't know, man. That's I, I don't know if he's going to be as good or better. He's a great, great player. And yes, his OHL numbers are ridiculous, but geez, Crosby is he's on another level. And I because he's in such good shape, I think he can produce, uh, he will fall off a bit, but I think he can produce up to this level uh, well into his mid-30s. Like, he's still in his prime right now, and he hasn't fallen off yet. He's only gotten better within, um, each time he gets injured, it seems he comes back stronger. So, Malkin's going, Krause is going, it's, it's pretty scary right now. Anyways, yeah, so that's all for this one. Um, please like if this video, subscribe if you really like it, tell all your friends, share with everyone, and uh, please watch my next video, which I'll be uploading now, about the latest weird game shootout win in the Rangers. And uh, let's go Penguins.